I just watched the Banshees of Inner Sharon for a second time and there is so much more to unpack in relation to Celtic and even Japanese mythology. One curious aspect in the Banshees are the masts that are hanging in Colum's house and featuring numerous shots in the back of the frame in the film. What do these masks signify? In the previous video I made on the Banshees that I'll suggest you watch if you haven't already, numerous people commented on these masks. One such comment was from JSKD2953 who made a fascinating connection. Watching the film again, I noticed in Colum's house a number of items, possibly folklore myth related, from other countries, including a Japanese mask of Onababa. Based on the Japanese folklore of the demon woman who causes death and misery to befall a specific person or family, essentially like a banshee. Oni Baba refers to a whole world of Japanese folklore and mythology. A Oni refers to a demon, a troll, an orc type entity in Japanese folklore. Mostly known for their evil and fierce spirit, which manifests in a propensity for murder and cannibalism. Akiji, meaning demon woman, is a younger version of Oni Baba, meaning demon hag who has been turned bad by karma and resentment. The Japanese also have a word Yoshi, which is synonymous with the English word fairy, with fairies heavily connected in Celtic and Irish mythology. There is also a 1964 Japanese horror film called Onibabi, which may serve as an inspiration for the Banshees in part. I haven't actually watched the film yet, but from the trailer, it seems to have the same dark, ominous, eerie tone as the Banshees, especially later in the film. The Banshees at the beginning also seems to have elements of a fairy tale. It soon turns dark, however. Some of the masks in Colum's house as well also seem to be similar to the Onababa masks featured in the film. From the Celtic perspective, the masks in Colum's house could also be a reference to Samhain, the Gaelic festival, similar to Halloween. At Samhain, it is said that the barriers between the human realm and the Celtic other world are lowered, meaning the entities can interact with our human realm more easily. Traditionally, people would often wear masks or dress up in general to scare off creatures such as fairies, kidnapping them. I would also like to highlight some other fascinating comments on the masks in particular from my other video on the Banshees of Inisherin. Samantha Stone said the following. My friend and I noticed the mask too, and we thought it may have been some nod to Colum's character trying on a new identity, replacing his previous life with Porrick, with his new him, who plays his music and totally casts out his friend. I'd forgotten that Porrick tried one of the masks on, which seems like a foreshadowing in the same logic of the new persona Porrick will also try on, when he goes to such extreme lengths to get back and then to get back at Colum. Others have also noted the numerous other artefacts that are hanging in Colum's house that seem to be from various cultures around the world. Marion had this fascinating insight. My takeaway is that Gleason's character had travelled in his lifetime, had musical talent, was exposed to other possibilities in his lifetime, and here he was ending up living out his days on a remote, uneventful island. I believe he had lots of regret of how life had turned out for himself, and that Farrell's simple character reflected this back to him. Another observation, and a sense the flip side of Marion's point, was made by Sabre Flamenco, a living. Or maybe he hadn't travelled at all, but in his imagination. The masks etc in his house, talisman of the life he wished he could have led. He decides to blame Porrick and the dull time he has spent with him, for everything he has failed to do. After watching this film for a second time, Mrs McCormick's character becomes even more clearer, that of a banshee. In Celtic and Irish mythology, a banshee is a female spirit, meaning woman of the fairy mound or fairy woman, who heralds in the death of a family member, usually by screaming, wailing or screeching. In this film, however, it is noted by Colum's character at one point that the banshee is almost silent, sitting in amusement at the events that have unfolded. My other video on the subject goes into more detail on the potential Banshees on the island, as Banshee is not singular, it's plural in the title of the film. 
But on a second watch, Mrs McCormack's role in Siobhan, the sister of Colin Farrell's character, leaving the island, becomes even more clear. When Siobhan posts a letter accepting a job on the mainland, meaning that she'll have to leave the island and Porrick, the banshee, i.e. the old woman Mrs McCormack, is seen out of focus in front of the post office, just as she posts the letter. Then when Siobhan leaves on the boat to go to the mainland, and Porrick is at the top of a hill waving goodbye, the banshee, Mrs McCormack, is in the background of the shot, once again out of focus, but Siobhan even reacts to this in the film. On second watch in this film is an incredible piece of art. It's maybe not as entertaining as say Top Gun Maverick, another film I've really enjoyed this year, but is more thought provoking and more profound. The film almost starts in a fairy tale kind of way. The film obviously soon turns dark and it becomes an element of a horror film at points and becomes obviously very morbid and very sad and about death in many respects. The allegory of the Irish Civil War is ever present as well and Martin McDonough, the writer director of the film, has even said so himself that the Civil War, the Irish Civil War, is an allegory of the characters themselves. A civil war between two friends, in the context of a wider civil war. Siobhan even notes that on an island, an isolated, insular, remote island, what happens outside is often not as important as it may seem. And the Irish Civil War, although ever present, is treated and even said at numerous points by different characters, is something outside, something not to be overly concerned with. By this point as well, Martin McDonough has truly got to be one of the great filmmakers of our time. But please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As you've seen from this film, I do try and read as many comments as possible. So please let me know any other theories to do with the mass and any other elements of, of mythology. Is the link with Japanese mythology correct? With Onababa, the, the kind of Japanese 1960s horror film? Does that have any merit whatsoever? Please let me know in the comments below. If you enjoy this work in general and find value in it, please consider supporting it through Patreon, buymeacoffee.com or PayPal. Please also subscribe, hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.